What's going on, guys? So today I want to do a video again on trading. It's been a little bit since I've done a video on that. So just talk about a couple things. I also want to show you guys a little backdoor hack I figured out or basically learned from somebody else a while back. I just haven't done a video or really talked about it much. So basically the hack that I'm referring to is being able to trade somebody that is on your friends list and you can target a card of theirs that is blocked. So I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but there is a way to go to your friends list. Or actually, let's first target a card uh, that I need. So it's going to have to be a card you want. And we'll go for, I don't know, let's see, Easter Bunny. Now you guys might see this lately too. There's a little glitch in the game where if you notice there's nothing under there that I can click trade for. If you click the red X and back out and then click it again, it pops up. So I don't know, that must be some type of glitch happening in the game, but just know that you can click the X button and click it again and it will pop up that trade for button. Now you need this trade for button to be able to backdoor somebody's locked card. So actually let's go before we do that. Since I don't know who has that card locked or what, let's go check out our friends. I got one of my buddies that is uh, Mike. Let's see what he's got that's locked real quick, and then I will try to target one of his locked cards. So you guys can see this cool little backdoor hack here. So oh, that's we want to target protected cards. <coughs> All right, so he has quite a few cards here protected, right? That we need. So we need Robin Hood. So let's go ahead and try to trade real quick for Robin Hood. I'm going to show you guys the trick here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into your want list. And you're going to find Robin Hood. Alright, so there he is, right? We see we have to hit the X again. Do it again. We're going to click trade for. Now, Mike904 is not going to pop up in the list. Because he doesn't have a duplicate and it's blocked. But what you can do is in the search up there where it says type to search, I can type his name. And you see he pops up now at this point. So there it is. It pulled his Robin Hood into the trade, if you notice it up top there. So I'm going to hit next. Now I can offer him something. I don't know. I'm just going to offer him a random card here. Let's do battle. All right. And there you go. It actually allows me to trade for his protected Robin Hood. And, boop, make trade. Trade has been sent. So there you go. I have now actually sent a trade for a card that he has blocked. So I don't know if you guys realize that that is, you are able to do that. So just, just good to know. I figured a lot of you guys probably didn't know that that was an option. But you have to, they have to be on your friends list. And you have to manually type their name into the search bar. And it pops up and allows you to trade. So just a neat little something there. I figure a lot of you guys probably weren't aware of that little backdoor workaround. And look at that. We've actually got just proof again that it works. He's actually accepted the trade. So I don't know what it looks like on his end, if he's able to see that his card is blocked or not. You guys need to let me know if you've, if you've ever experienced this where somebody sends you this trade. But right there we can see it actually went through and was accepted. So kind of neat there. Uh, let's go into the trade room now. I want to tell you some other tricks of the trade that I like to do. Um, so let's start with, um, I, I told you guys in the past that I like to basically trade up. So I like to target, typically when I build my collection out, I want to target limited rares and limited epic cards. And then from there, I want to use those good playables that I target in that category to trade into limited legendaries that I need. So what I did is I, I've basically targeted, um, I've made a favorites list. So you can go into cards um, basically that you need. So right here, I'm back in the, in the thing. I'll, I'll click favorites. So I've basically built a list of favorite cards that I think are playable cards <coughs> that I'm going to target basically on, when somebody has them. So you can see I've got several decent playables listed for all all types of categories here a lot of limited rares limited epics some limited legendaries that i want to target so just to give you an idea now this i do this ahead of time basically target everything i'm looking for that way it saves me time in the trade room and this is important because i want to be as efficient as possible when i'm trying to blast out tons of trades right i want to click on somebody and i want to know right away if they have what i need so let's just go i'm going to target 
limited rares. So let's check out. And I want to see if anybody has anything that I have or needs anything I have a dupe of. They do not. Okay, so I'm going to come back. Let's see if anybody, what they need here. Uh, so what do I not care about? We've got, what is this card? Emancipation. I don't, I have an emancipation I don't really care about. I don't think it's super great, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to click all cards, and I'm going to click my favorites button and see if they have anything that I want that is a playable card. So they do have a few. We saw, so basically this, this avenue that I'm taking is getting rid of a card that I deem is not super playable. We don't see it played very often, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to acquire a playable rare that I can trade on the back end. So I'm basically going to opt to give up Emancipation. Your history cards in hand cost minus two. Okay, whatever. I don't think it's that great. And I'm going to try to grab his Center Claws. I really like Center Claws. I think it has a lot of uses in a taxing deck. And I think it has a lot of uses as just, you know, making your cards in hand a little bit cheaper as well. So I think the card as a whole is fairly playable. So let's see if we can get a playable card and just drop a card that we don't really care. I mean... Now, this, this is only effective if you're not trying to gather every card in the game. I don't care about having uh, every card in the game. I care about building out playable cards because I'm going to take these playable cards and trade them, try to trade up into better cards. So that's the goal. I don't care about these low-level cards making sure I have one in, in my collection. That doesn't matter to me. I care about playable cards. And I, I've, I've targeted what cards already that I deem playable. So that's what we did. Now, <coughs> sorry about that. Next step. I'm going to try to see if I can hunt down a limited legendary card. Let's go to the offer section. And I'm going to see if anybody has a limited legendary card that I need or that I want. I don't even care if it's a dupe. Let's just see if there's anything decent. That looks like... Now, I don't like to target the top dog play, uh, playable cards because I'm, I'm going to send a trade that is... Let's, let's try for this Easter Bunny since it's Easter. So I'm going to try to target... Um, so cards they need, they don't really need anything that we have is the problem. So we're going to back out because I want to send them limited epics and limited rares. So if, if you immediately see that they don't need anything, chances of them accepting are pretty low. So just don't even don't even mess with that. So let's see, uh, let's go back to this dwarf, Mongoose. Don't necessarily need it, you know, but it's a limited limited legendary. We could probably make a deck or do something cool with it, maybe a video later down the line. And you see a bu bunch of cards. Let's see what he needs. They do need a bunch of stuff. So let me sort now by my favorites, and I want to see if he needs any of those cards that I mentioned already that I have duplicates of. <coughs> and there it is, the center claws. Now, for limited legendaries, the way I get a lot of people accepting is I'm going to send them two limited rares and two limited epics. And this does seem like it's a little bit skewed to them, but it's not overly skewed to them. It's it's actually a decent decent trade, I feel like, in their favor, especially if it's cards they don't have. So you can see I'm, I'm choosing two rares. Let's go back up and see what two limited epics I have. Let's give them a Prince Albert. And what else? Oh, let's let's sort now since they, that's my favorite. Let's just sort by limited epic duplicates here. So let's give them let's give them this queen here. So that's a pretty good spread right there, right? You see a center claws and night witches, both both playable. I, I think they're both extremely playable. Prince Albert's playable, and then obviously uh, these are and this this card is specific for you know. Uh, festive traditions deck so not super playable but halfway decent so and look it's showing it as a fair trade and we're gonna get we're probably gonna get this limited legendary card honestly <coughs> so that's that's what i like to do right there i like to try to trade up get rid of the cards that i don't necessarily need trade into playable cards and then from those playable cards we trade into better limited legendary cards and try to fill out that collection. I'd rather fill out my limited legendary collection more so than my limited rares and limited epics. You know what I mean? Let's let's try to let's try to trade into those good cards. Now, my other trading strategy that I, I've showed you guys in the past, but for those that might not have seen it, I like to to go to the want section and I like to target um, <clears throat> fusion ingredients. 
So I've done this video in the past. I've kind of shown you this strategy already. So let's target. So I'm going to target one I've got duplicates of. Let's target Alan Turning. So another way to get some decent limited led, uh, limited playables. Let's just let's just hit favorites. See if he's got anything we need. <coughs> so not overly. Oh, we're going to hit all cards too. Uh, he's got a Helen Keller. Okay. All right. Let's let's target Helen Keller. She's extremely playable in a power per turn deck. Limited epic. So I'm gonna I'm gonna target that. So I'm gonna give him two Allen turns turning since we know he needs that, right? That's what he's what he's gunning for at least at the moment. So we're basically throwing these in as just sweetening the deal. We don't even care about those. So what I'm gonna give him now is I'm gonna give him a limited rare, and then let's go to our duplicates. So what's a playable halfway decent playable limited rare? Let's give him Icelandic Yule Cat. It's good in a taxing deck. And I'm going to give him a limited common card of a duplicate. What's well, halfway decent? Let's see here. Probably nothing super great, but we can try to give him something okay. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Let's go Leopard. All right. So you can see this trade is now even. It's balanced out. <coughs> He's going to get two cards that he wanted. He's going to get an Icelandic Yule Cat, or Yule Cat, which is extremely playable, and a Leopard. Now, the problem, the downside is he only owns one of the Helen Kellers, so the chances are a little lower that he's going to accept this trade. If he had duplicates, though, he probably would accept this trade. So that's another rule of thumb. I'm going to send this trade anyway, see if we get lucky. But another rule of thumb is if there's duplicates of playable cards, the chances are... This is a good strategy to trade the fusion ingredients that they need two of, or that you have two of, and try to drop a little bit lower legendaries, or uh, I'm sorry, lower uh, rarities on them. So let's see. Uh, let's see if anybody's got any duplicates that are halfway playable here. Uh, let me actually go back. Okay, nobody accepted anything yet. But I want to see if... So what do we have? Uh, I'm surprised I'm out of trades already. What did I trade earlier? Hmm. I was hoping to get a, see if I can cancel something and get some trades, but I guess not. <coughs> All right, so let's see here. Let's let's check out if anybody has any duplicates real quick. Or actually, we just did that, so let's see. What's any other... Oh, another, another thing to uh, discuss when trading is values of cards. And this is something I didn't talk about in the past. But if you go on Discord and, you, and you're in the trade rooms at all, there's there's uh, basically currency that runs around in there, or, or a denomination, we call it, of MM. So you might see that, like, oh, this card is worth 1 MM or 2 MM. And that, that is basically saying the card is worth a mid-mythic. So MM stands for mid-mythic. So what is a mid-mythic? That is a card that has, it's kind of, it's a mythic card that is kind of middle of the road. So let's go to our mythic cards and show you, uh, where am I going? Mythic cards. <coughs> All right, so what is a mid, uh, mid-mythic? I would probably uh, venture to say that something like, I don't know, Chupacabra is probably a good uh, example of a mid-mythic. Or possibly Tung's, Tunguska Event. That's probably a decent example of a mid-mythic card. So this card would be valued at 1 mm. Now, how does that, what does that mean? Like, how do we use that to better, better understand trading? So if, if you have this as a value, if you know that this is the value of Tunguska Event, let's, let's just call it 1 mm. Okay, now we can go back and we're going we're gonna to value other things based on Tunguska event. So what, would, what kind of value would we put on Statue of Liberty, let's say? Do we think it's as good as a, a mythic card as Tunguska event? It's, it's fair, very playable, right? This is a very good card. I don't know that it's exactly up to 1 mm, but it might be 0 0.8, 0 0.75. It's probably pretty close, if not 1 mm. Um, 
I would probably value myself probably around 0.8 or 0.75, but still a very playable card. One could argue it is one MM on its own. Uh, let's check out what else do we have? <coughs> uh, what's a good example of a another card? So you could say maybe Clouded Leopard. This might be a good example of like 0.5 to 0.75, somewhere in that range, MM. Uh, I know a lot of people like to say Shinigami, for example, is, or at least pre-nerf, was over 1 MM, so probably either 1 MM or a little above 1 MM. Heimdall, same thing, probably close to 1 MM. So just basically saying this card is equal to a mid-mythic of, of trade value. So... <coughs> what about here's a good here's a good one what do we what do we think art deco is leave a comment i'm curious what you guys think do we do we see this card as valued closer to 0.5 half of an, a myth a mid mythic closer to 0.75 or is it even lower is it 0.25 one could argue this thing is is really good right i mean this is a really good card even though it's an epic, it could be closer to point... Honestly, I think it's probably closer to 0.5 mm, which is very very good for an epic card. That could be a little high. It might be a little bit lower than that, but still pretty high. <coughs> Excuse me. Man, can't stop coughing today. But that's what you got to look at. You got to look at um, the values on these cards and what we think they are and then compare it to... Roughly a mid mythic card. What's if you know that Tunguska event is one mm? What is what is Grant Wood? You know, this card's not extremely playable. It's a very specific card in specific build. <coughs> this is probably closer to 0.25 mm, maybe a little higher, maybe 0.3. But <coughs> basically saying this and you know three of these would equal one, you know mythic card mid mythic card so just food for thought guys keep that in mind all these cards especially in trade rooms have specific values that guys guys like to uh use for them so iron maiden might be 0.5 mmm so two of those would equal one mythic mid mythic <coughs> you've also got mythics that are worth a lot so archangel for instance uh, it's not a, it's not a mid mythic on its own. It's actually a, a higher tier mythic. So this card might be might, might be valued closer to four mid mythics. So uh, four mm, I'd say. So this card could essentially <coughs> to trade for it, you might need to give up four low level mythic cards to be able to get this card, or higher tier legendary cards uh, to garner a archangel. So. Just food for thought, guys, when you are trading. Make sure you're not just trying to get somebody's Archangel and you're dropping, you know, a Chupacabra because it's not it's not comparable. Even though they're both mythics, it's, it's still not comparable. But I'll leave you guys with that. That's all I wanted to discuss today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Oh, did we get? See, there we go. We got an accepted. So we did get his Helen Keller after all. Look at that. So it worked out. So perfect example, guys. That's That's how you send a trade in the trade room. And they accept it. <coughs> Dang. Sorry again. My throat today. Ooh. But all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.